All right. Good morning. So welcome to our Packer Tracer 101. And hopefully we'll get through all the basics of how to run this. Um, <clears throat> this is ad hoc. So I haven't planned out anything. Um, but I'll just go through the the main ones. Um, just like with any uh, application now, we can save what we're working on and open it up again. So there's the new open um, save, save as um, files. Now, one of the things you should have been doing during the course is I'm hoping you were looking at the labs, the packet tracer activities during the chapters, and you could click on the open button and click on the file uh, to get back into it. Um, so you can just open up the packet file and if you're doing the challenge activities within Packet Tracer, there, there's actually Packet Tracer activities that challenge activities. You open them up and they will give you a scoring and tell you what's left to do if you use them because the um, pre designed Packet Tracer activities within the Cisco course have the lab instructions built into them. So you can have them as a separate window open while you're doing your lab on this side as well. So there's those options and you've got the open save print and all the other normal Windows type environment things like copying and pasting, undo, redo, zooming in and out. Okay, so that's the basic stuff that everybody should be over. Now there's two mo modes here, there's logical and physical. The physical is actually of your city. You can go in to your wiring closet and actually mount your equipment. Um, so this is the physical one, so you can actually specify where it is. All right. Or there's the logical, which is the actual how things flow during your network. So that I'm going to concentrate on the logical topology diagrams, mainly because they're the ones that we most commonly will see and use during our course. Now, down the bottom, we have our devices. So we have network devices, end devices, components, wiring, and then we have miscellaneous and cloud. Now, under each uh, menu item, if you like, you have the subgroup. So under network devices, you'll have routers, switches, hubs, all this sort of thing. Then under end devices, you scroll through and you can see these are all the devices we can add. So as I was talking yesterday about the standard topology that we've got to work towards for the assessment is to PC, so you can just drag it, put it up. So we'll start building. So you just select the item you want and drag it up. Now, so I said there was two PCs, a router, and a switch. 
Okay. Now it doesn't matter which model we choose in this early stage. If you just take it straight off the bottom, it will give you a generic 1941. Um, you can actually select your models down the bottom and you know, they'll be appropriate. Now, if you click on them, it'll bring it up and this is the physical view. Now, they are on by default, and you can zoom in if you need to. Okay, there's a zoom in and zoom out button, it's an original size. Now, if, which is outside of our scope right now, we want to add cards into these modules like the WIC 2T is the most common card we'd be adding you have to turn off your device and then select the card and then drag the card into the slot and then turn the device back on just like you should do in real life if you're adding cards in. Now for our basic network diagrams we don't need to add additional cards into these. We'll be just using the inbuilt fast Ethernet ports and that over here. So if we do a zoom in so you can see that's as far in as it's gonna take us. So we have two built-in fast Ethernet ports and then we down here you'll see a console port and here auxiliary port. So that's all that we need to do this configuration. Now when we go to wire up we can wire it up exactly like we would do in real life. Um, which isn't a bad thing to do while you're practicing without the benefit of physical hardware because that way you are practicing where to actually put your cables. So how do we configure the cabling? Well, we go to the cabling option, which is the lightning bolt. And as we scroll across, if we just select the lightning bolt again, the big orange one, that will be the automatic cabling. Or we can come across and go console leads, patch cable. So we've got straight through crossover, right, and fiber. Then we go in the serial types of serial connections. But at this point, if we just use our first couple there, we can do the basic network. So a straight through solid black line. We connect via the fast ethernet port. So, and then come up to our switch and we can choose a standard port to connect to and again from the switch across to one of our ports on the router port's got gigabit ethernet which will be fine and then when we're coming out this side Okay, so we've got a switch this way and we don't have a switch this way. So what cable would you have to use to connect an end device directly to your router? Correct cable would be a crossover. Straight in. Okay, now 
there's some visual cues you can see here that after a while these triangles became green from red which meant that the circuit or the connection between these two devices came up okay now and you'll notice here once it was connected it came up with the interface id sitting next to it so why isn't this one up well quite frankly because we've done one or two things left it off or haven't configured the interfaces so they're not active all right so if you want to check quickly well if you zoom in there's a little light underneath a switch turn it on turn screen so you now now know it's powered on so it's because this device hasn't had any configuration added to it now if we want to replicate real life to configure the switch and the router we need to connect our host machine from our RS-232 to the console port on our device and just to save doubling up we'll go from the PC1 across to the console port on the router so this is how we would wire up physically in the real world so you can duplicate this and so we've got some basic connections all done now we can do some basic config without needing to do any IP addressing but each network should have some so if I do some very generic and the outline color so if we draw that We should have been able to do. Clear that up. And drag it down. There we go. So you can color code your networks. So any device in this little circle ellipse is one network and then if I want to create another one change the color draw it in place okay so we can sort of highlight the individual networks. Now we can then add notes and say this is subnet two and we have 
12 users. All right. And we can say that our network that we start with is there. And this one down here is subnet one, and we have to cater for 50 users down there. So we now have some a network ID that we can subdivide. And we now have two subnets of that network. So we can now work on getting our networking addressing done. And we can do this via our subnetting, which I'm hoping you all remember how to do, because it is on the practical exam. So how many bit do we need for 12 users? Now, if you remember our little two, one. All right, so here's our little counter. So if we need 12 users, where does 12 fit in here? So we need to have at least one, two, three, four, five bits in the user side to cater for 12 users. What about 50? Well, 50 fits into there. So here we can borrow one one bit. All right. So if we make this network a 192.168.10.0.25, and the next one below that would be. All right, so we've borrowed one bit. So if it's off, it's zero. If it's on, it's 128 slash 25. All right, so we're going to use one of those down here. There you go, 192, 168, 10. Now I just use the largest first. That's just the way I was taught. So this becomes our network for subnet one. Now for 12 users, I need to borrow another two bits. So I'll take the 192, 168, 10 slash zero network and increase my bits by another two takes it to 27 and that gives me the 32 so I now have thirty two now I can take these numbers up by thirty two to get the next network rinse and repeat Uh, 32 and 64 is 96. So you're getting the hint. Now if I add 32 to that, what do I get? 128. Which I can't use because it's already used over here. So there's my four networks that I can use by extending 
the subnet by another two bits. So we'll add that here. And as I said, I tend to use the largest first, counting down. And the reason I do that is because I came out of the time where you couldn't use subnet zero, which is the first one there. Couldn't use this one. So we would keep dividing and leave that one alone. So we now have our two separate networks and we know from all those lovely videos and practices that you've done that to get the usable host range we have the network address which is the dot 96 and we have the first usable which is add one which is 97 we have the last usable and then we have the broadcast so we know that the broadcast address is going to be one less than the next one so 96 plus 32 is 128 minus 1 is 127 and the last usable is one, one below that, which is 126. So there you have that address range. Now, read some repeat for the uh, network over here, which is 128. The first one. 129, um, the last, and the broadcast. Now, on this network, we went by 128, so the broadcast is going to be 255. So the last one is going to be 254. So, depending on how the scenario is listed, you'll have to assign one to the gateway and one to the PC. So let's make the gateway the last usable address. And this is the slash 25 network. And so there's the IP address of the gateway, and we want to give our host Let's start, kick it off with the first being the opposite end. And rinse and repeat for this network over here. So we assign the first address, which is 97 slash, and this one's 27. And then the gateway address is 26 slash 27 Just pull those around a little bit so they make a little bit more sense All right, so now that we've got our addressing assigned we can go in and configure our devices Now how do we get into the router? Well we click on the PC, opens up our little line, and if we go to the desktop, 
we can go to the terminal session and if you leave it with the defaults and press OK, you log into your router. Yeah. Bit worried about trying to close that dialog box without closing the share. All right, so here's our dialog box that is the config output of our router. And it's on a fresh boot up with no configuration because it's asking us to enter the initial configuration using a wizard. You can use the wizard. But I highly recommend people not to use it because it doesn't cover everything that you've got to do when we go through setting up devices. So I always go no and then hit enter and this puts us in if you remember, our default mode is user, and that's highlighted by the greater than sign. And we need to go to privilege, which is enable, okay, or you'll develop the knack of using shortcut keys, which is en for enable. The prompt will change to the hash and then we go into config terminal conf t to go into global config. First thing we need to do is change our host name from router to something else. So host name. Now host names need to start with a alpha. So an A B C and it can contain numeric characters after the first one. So we could go, it's router one, R1. For example, that would conform, or you could have a longer name, whatever happens to be the naming convention in place. Once we change the host name, the prompt will change to reflect the host that you're in. Now, we need to configure these two interfaces. Now, I know that my first, actually, let's step through the basics first before we go to the interfaces. First thing you should do is the basics, which is changing your host name and setting your passwords. So the first password we should configure is the enable password and we want to encrypt that password so it's not seen in the running config file. So we enable secret and if you use the question mark key, it will tell you what it expects to see next. So this is called dynamic help and we can then type in the password so what and the two passwords used within the lab work is class and Cisco very difficult I know all right so we've just put that one in then we need to go to our lines so line console zero, which is what we're connected to, and say we want a password, and our password is going to be Cisco, and we want the line console to ask for a password on login, and the other way we can log in is via the virtual terminal lines, which are from zero 
to five, four, and again, password, Cisco, and ask for the credentials on login. That's a, our passwords all configured. Now, if I end out of that, and then type in exit, logs me out of the device. Now, hit enter to come back in. I'm now being asked for a password, which I'll type in as Cisco. Back in, change modes. Now I have to have a password to change modes, which is class, and we're back in. All right, so we know that our passwords have been set. So the basic configuration of changing our host name and setting our passwords have been done. Now, exit to go back one level and to totally exit out. And as you can see there, as I was in user mode and I typed in end, which is not a command at this level, it's trying to translate that. So it's trying to do a DNS lookup. So, which is going to take time, pain, and we can abort out of it using the control shift six. And, all right, so what I was going to show you is to show run command. And here we have enable secret and a whole heap of characters. So this is hashed out our word. So you can't actually see what it is now. And come down by just hitting the space key. Gets another page. If you hit enter, it's a line by line. And then we get to our console and VTUI lines. All right. So let's get to who these interfaces. Now this is a gigabit interface, and if you scroll up, it'll see the Gigabit, first two letters, GI, and you want the numbers at the end, which is zero, zero. And what do I want to put in here? Well, first of all, I want to put a description in here saying this is a uh, Link to our switched local area network. Okay, and then I want to put an IP address in here of What's my gateway address over here? 192.168.10.254. Now, you've got to put in the full subnet mask of 255.255.255. Now it's a slash 25. So that's a 128. Next, we want to open the interface. So the interface is shut down. So to turn it on, 
we put no in front of the shutdown command. And you'll see here that the line comes up, change state up, protocols change state up. Just hit enter to get back to the prompt. Okay, so there's our description, there's our IP address, and we turned it on. And our little lights over here have fired up. And you're going, how did I know it was zero, zero that I wanted to use? Because I connected this one first, and I went from zero, then connected this one to one. So we want to go to the interface GI zero slash one next. And we want to put a description saying it's the link to our crossover. All right, X over PC. And again, IP address, and we're using the 192.168.10.126 address. And the subnet mask is 255.255.255. And it's the slash 27, so it's 128 plus 64. It's 192. Plus 32 is 224. And again, we want to open that up by using the no shut command. All right, so that's our basic configuration. Okay, if the interface has gone green, firing up. Now, let's step back out of the interface command into global config. And that annoying DNS lookup, we can turn off by putting in no IP lookup. I domain lookup. Domain hyphen lookup. All right. So no IP domain lookup. And that has our little DNS issue go away. Now, If we come down through here, we have this encrypted. There's our no IP domain lookup. Here's our interfaces with our descriptions all in place. But our passwords on our line consoles are clearly visible. And if we come up here, to the very start of the config file, we have no service password encryption, which means these passwords are in clear text. So we want to turn service password encryption on. And now when we do a show run, we go down at the bottom, our passwords, have a low level encryption. All right, great, that's fantastic. Now, what do I do? I want to save my config file. So, copy running config to startup config. 
destination file startup config, yes, hit the enter key. We have now saved our configuration. I can turn that device off and turn it back on and it will still hold all that configuration. So if we come over to PC1 for, to connect, or PC0, to the desktop, open terminal, and we hook in to the switch. The switch has a couple of notices here saying Fast Ethernet 1 and 2 came up as we turn them on. And same with the switch, we enter privilege mode, config mode, and now we will need to configure the switch just like we did with the router. But the fast ethernet ports, we don't need to put IP addresses on because the switch is a layer two device that uses MAC addresses. So what do we need to configure? Well, we need to change the host name. Let's go keep our short naming convention to S1 for switch one. And well, what do we need to put in? Well, we need to put in our enable secret. And what was our secret? That's class. And then we will need to go to our line console zero and put our passwords in here. Cisco and Required on login. Now, switches have more virtual terminal lines than routers. So our VTY is 0 to 15 on a switch. And then password Cisco again on login. And there's our virtual terminal lines password protected as well as our um, privilege mode. So what else do we need to put on? Now if we step back one level to global config, we need to turn on service password encryption, just like we did with the router. What else do we need to do? So we've put our passwords in, we've changed our host name. We need to give this device a IP address so that we can remotely configure it later. But we don't have any layer three interfaces. Well, we do. If we do a show run, and way down the bottom of the interfaces is this VLAN 1. Now VLAN 1 is a virtual local area network interface. Okay. So this is where we put our IP address in. So we go to interface VLAN 1. put our IP address in. Now it's got to be an IP address of this network and we'll take it. 254 is the router, so let's use 253 for the switch. Subnet mask is 255, 255, 255, 128 and we can put a description on there of switch um, address. Open the port by no shutdown. Again. We have that all done. What was the other thing that we did on the other one? 
but then they look up. So again, we could do the no IP domain look up to turn that off. And one of the handy things you can do while you're typing in commands is hit the tab key. If you've got enough of a unique command, the tab key will finish the command off for you. So, I think that's it. So if we do a show run now, we've got password encryption on, we've got our enable secret, we've changed our host name, we've got no pesky domain lookups. Um, switch port configuration is beyond our scope at the moment. We have our VLAN interface configured with an IP address of the network that the switch resides in. And we have our line and console ports password protected. Copy run start. Configured. Is that all what we've got to do? What about doing our IP address on the PCs? So this is our PC over here and we're going to call it PC Fred. It's going to have a static IP address. All right, so we can go in Gateway DNS, DHCP. But if you actually come across to the interface, we can add our static IP address in. And 128, and we have that configured. Now, if we go back to our desktop, close our terminal session, open up our command prompt, and do IP config slash all. Helps if you don't put a space in the IP config. And we get our config there. So there's no default gateway or anything configured because I didn't configure it. So if you on the desktop, open the IP config one, you'll actually get them all. So the default gateway is going to be our routers interface, which is 10.254. We don't have a DNS server, but generally speaking, it would point off to somewhere like the gateway to forward it on. So just like your home network, you point it to how to get to the DNS server. So PC threads configured, let's do our second PC over here, close that down, open the IP config, and we have 192.168.10.97, and that's going to be a 224 with a gateway of one two six and DNS server uh, will point it to the router as well and close that off because we've got no save options and if we go in the prompt just to confirm it took it all IP config slash all 
Looks like we've got a full config. Let's try to ping our gateway, 192, 168, 10, 126. We're having a reply. Let's try to ping Fred over on 129. First one timed out because of the out requests happening. So if we repeat it, we'll have all five come back because we have an entry in the ARP table. So there you go. That's as complex as we need to take it. We've configured two different networks. We've configured a router and a switch. Now, do we... Can we do extra things? Yeah, we can. If you look back at chapter 16, it talked about device hardening and the commands that can be used in there. All right, so changing minimum password lengths, all this sort of stuff can be used on that router as well. But that's the basis of networking. You plug things together, you design an IP addressing scheme, and then you go and configure the devices with host names and get them connected up. So again, I've done that in under an hour. You would be expected to do this in a, if we're in the classroom, I would give you a practical exam, um, somewhat like this. You would have to do a couple of subnetting questions connect a couple of PCs, a router and switch together, address them, put passwords in, and get them up and running, and do your own troubleshooting to make sure it works. Okay. Um, if you wanted to look at it from a um, practical exam in the classroom. Once you got to this stage, for the troubleshooting, I'll get you to step away from your config. I would break three things in your network design, and you would then have to troubleshoot your network to find the mistakes. And that would be kind of the practical. It's not difficult. We've only covered the very basics of configuration. So there's not a great deal to test you on. It's just making sure you know what's there and to make use of it. All right, so anybody got any questions regarding the basics? And I'm hoping you could all see that these little pop-up dialog boxes and that reasonably on your screens. All good? Okay. Well, I'll post this up as our Packer Tracer 101. And as I said, with doing the basics of Packet Tracer. Once you ha have done this, you can save it out to come back to it if you need to come back to it or whatever. And you can say it's 
the well IGN like a tracer 101 file saved you can always come back to it open it up turn everything on and go for it there okay now once you've got the networks there you can go into simulation mode all right and we can do a ping going the other way 97 and what you see over on here because we're in simulation mode let's pull this down here out of the way is our little packet and we can step through and see the packet in its travels and it's giving you the instructions of what it's doing and you can do it step by step or you can just hit play and if I bring up that we've got our first reply so if I just hit play So you can see what the traffic's doing. Just thought I'd throw that one in. That becomes using the simulation later on um, when we start playing around with doing some other stuff in it becomes really fun to watch. And also if you've got a fault that you can't quite see what's going on um, you can do the ping command like that and step it through in the simulation and you know a ping command should originate from here and go to there so you can watch the packet and if the packet fails here you know that the fault is somewhere on this device so it kind of helps you troubleshoot in the early days as well using the simulation commands and all right I'll let you go at that stage unless somebody's got a question and all good all good all good okay well I'll let you go thanks Packet Tracer 101 so I'll stop the recording there.